is sadhana panchikam don't forget to practice om sahana bhavatu sahana bhavatu means that i guard myself i protect myself with reference to a teacher or we can say that let existence take care of me sahana bhunaktu so when we say sahana bhunaktu it means let let us let us enjoy the spiritual journey say hello hunak to am i enjoying the spiritual journey every day you do it and just ask or the mind is opposing that is the meaning of this shanti mantra so remember the word acronym acronym is gross g means the first line Om Sahana Bhunaktu. R means the relish. No, sorry. Sahana Bhavatu is the first one. G here means the guarding, protecting myself and protecting my entire existence. Huh? With the knowledge. Guru here means the knowledge. So, say relish. R means the relish. Relish captures that a sense of enjoying the spiritual journey and operate. Operate is G R O. O means the operate. The third line of the mantra is Sahviriyam Karva Vahi. When I operate, I must be aware. I must maintain my alertness and attention in the journey. Not only while listening to the teacher, but all the time, all the time during the day. and w means the wisdom tejasvina vadhi tamastu when i am applying operating and i see that is it possible to apply this principle to remain uh, when i meet someone oh let the first word or oh, let both be protected so when i how i why i think let both be protected to get rid of the impurity of the mind relish let us enjoy the journey after protection r and then operate we have come to the third one the fourth one the w w means the wisdom oh am i constantly applying the wisdom means what i am relaxed and calm and happy and oh very good and the word s means the sync sync means here you can say the harmony or ma vidvisha vahi so the the fifth line basically literally means uh, no jealousy no hatred against but then i made it positive that there should be a harmony now once you do this and uh, we have also done it couple of times in om namah shivaya meditation Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. So when you are doing it, even for ten minutes, Om Shanti to the world of known. What is the world of known? Near and the dear ones, my family, strangers, friend, professional life, family life, my money, my house, everything, whatever I know. the war that is continuing so i have to check while saying om shanti that as such there is no reaction that reaction means that mind is influenced and dictated by the outer situations the first one first shanti is for the known world the second shanti to the known world what is the i don't know what is going to happen the next moment what situation what event to what person oh, i may be knowing that what person i meet but what communication will take place i'm not at all aware so then i let there be a peace into that whatever the unknown comes i was giving an example of uh, there is a famous uh, reality show uh, in india who wants to be millionaire so one 22 year old very thin weakling and it appears that he seems to be a crazy guy 
but he was extremely intelligent. And the unfavorable situation part was that he underwent an eight surgeries into his belly. Surgery of the kidney, surgery of the large intestine, surgery of the gallbladder, and other stuff. So whatever comes, I don't know whatever is going to come. And then he told the anchor that there is going to be the la one more surgery. And for that, I don't have the money. But he already became a millionaire. So now he has the, enough money to underwent a surgery. What I'm saying, you know, that Om Shanti, second Shanti is is for the uh, no, what what is going to come in the future i don't know maybe i may be trying myself to regulate so but because i say shanti i'm prepared for it but how it helps me for my self-discovery at least the mind does not spend too much of time if anything good happens or if anything unfavorable happens, I can keep my mind in the state of the calmness. And the third, Shanti is all about the peace. So this, this mantra really fits here. So I have to do it every day. You just, you know, I also pick up any mantra, Sahana Bhavatu, Sahana Bhunaktu, that is Ar Sahaviryam Karva Vahe O O Operate W Wisdom Stage Svinavadhita Mastu Last one S Sinking Ma Vidvisha Vahe So then I contemplate and reflect and check the mind. After that, for another five or ten minutes, Om Shanti, you visualize the known world, what will happen, the past impression, if it has created very strong impression, the mind will return to that thought. So then you can remember, okay, no, no I don't need that Shanti, and to the known world, and ultimately to the Shanti within me. So just continue doing it regularly regularly that is what is we can say it is one way of doing the mangala charan we will reach to the mangala charan type where there is a do you remember there is a it is not it is not a trinity it is a duality i and the uh, I and the real self. There is no the third factor that comes. So uh, how it happens? Uh, how it happens? So it happens because of one is the Mangala Charan, second is the four groups of practices, four groups of practices, uh, which we say the Satsang. What is that? You know, the Viveka, Viragya, Shatasampati, and the Mumuksha. That is what. But the Satsang helps. Satsang, you know, start with the listening and learning constantly, contemplation and reflection, and contemplation and reflection followed by the practice. But what should come out of this Satsang? I should be detached. First result of the satsang is detachment. So when I continue with the detachment, it results into freedom from a delusion. So I have detachment, I have freedom from a delusion. That keeps the mind totally relaxed and pure. Not many people say that, oh, I'm listening to the talk and understand. No. So I'm listening it again and repeat listening and then I listen to it for 15 minutes and I hold on. I say, what is the principle is there? How to apply that principle? What happens? What happens to my mind? And when I say, 
what happens to my mind, it results first into detachment, then it results into freedom from the delusion, and that brings the calmness to the mind. I was teaching Anne yesterday. So she said, you know, it's, it's a bit difficult for me to understand. Then I created an aware, aware model? No. I said, oh, let us understand. I said, is it possible to say every day in the morning that I am the real self of the nature of peace, happiness, love, and wisdom? There is no problem. She said, there is no problem. She is almost 89 now, 90. So I said, yes. Now remember the second step to the mind. You say, let me investigate. So what should I investigate? I have a problem of anxiety. And what is this anxiety? Is anxiety is my real nature or is the real self my real nature? So anxiety cannot be my real nature. Why it cannot be real nature? Because it comes and goes. The real self continues. My consciousness continues as it is. So she said, can you elaborate it? How the consciousness continues? I said, can your eyes see minus consciousness? Oh, no, I cannot see, I cannot hear. Oh, I cannot feel the touch. Oh, the same, okay. So that consciousness is present 24 by 7, and especially during the waking state, you forget that. When you forget, the mind creates the false I, and then it creates an anxiety, and you start claiming, I'm into anxiety. So why you investigate with reference to the real self? Oh, when I investigate, then what I, what I find, I find the symptoms of that anxiety is no longer present. Because I already understood that this anxiety is false. Are you getting it? Oh, she said, yes, I got, I got it. So it means that I'm relaxed. Yes, I said, that is the next step. Because you feel the sense of relaxation, now you have to investigate here whether this relaxation comes from any situation, people, outside, or it is just by your contemplation and reflection. Oh, yes, it, it comes from because of my contemplation and reflection. I said that is only the first step. And the second step, because you experience the calmness and it is not dependent on anything outside, it means it has come from within you. That is your first glimpse of the real self. You started with that I'm the real self, and now you proved it. So she's saying, I have to go through it again and again. I have to remember it again. Yes, I said yes. That remembering is the contemplation and reflection. Then what should I do? I said, what do you need to do? You just continue to be aware of that relaxation and calmness. Because now your anxiety is gone. The more you are aware, you can embody your real nature. That is the purpose of the satsang. That is the entire process of the satsang. Satsang is not only the listening and learning. No, it has to do with the contemplation and reflection. So I, I have broken up it into different parts. So uh, while continuously listening and learning, we reach to that state of uh, uh, the, uh, our mind starts following these steps whether there is a reaction or anxiety or anger or the false side, I find the life 
is now changing and that changes my behavior and attitude. So she was asking, do I need to practice? I said, you are already into relaxation and calm that you found without the practice, just by contemplation and reflection. Now you have to maintain that. How to maintain? You maintain that awareness. So in the field of awareness, if some other thought comes, you drive it away. But it will not happen in a day. I said, yes, it will not happen in a day. It's a continuous practice. Oh, so I only have to apply the knowledge. Yes, yeah, I have only to apply the knowledge. See the other side of it. If you apply the knowledge rightly, you are land you land up in the state of calmness. In other situations, you still find the anxiety. What should I do? Repeat it. Repeat the contemplation. Repeat the contemplation because if the ego is deeply, very deep and strong with reference to some thought and idea, it will not allow you to come. So you have to repeat the process so that you make it weaker and ultimately you result into it. So this is one aspect, but what I wanted to convey to you, the convey to you is that now you are mentally purifying. You are purifying your mind. Okay, I'm purifying my mind. So that is why I'm linking another topic which I have discussed a couple of weeks ago. There are four types of intellect. I could see the four types of intellect when I feel that relaxation in my level of awareness goes up. What are the four types of intellect? The dharma intellect. I told you the righteous intellect. That will inspire me to, to do the nitya karma, the vairagya intellect, the dispassion intellect. That will keep me indifferent of the things and the, whatever is happening in the world. So you go back to the Shanti Mantra. So it means, oh, so that is why the Shanti Mantra is like that. So Vairagya intellect. After the Vairagya intellect, by regular practice, we develop a kind of love and attachment to the satsang. So yes, attachment to the satsang, and you are attaching to the something real. So there is no problem. And that attachment comes to, converts into the love. And that is our intellect is full of love. When the intellect is full of love, that awakens to the real self. That is another way to understand before we start each and every step. Then what happens? Now see that, that is the beauty, uh, how the progress takes place. So once you understand, then you can remember that, do I have a righteous intellect? Do I have a dispassion intellect? I'm in stress and I have a dispassion intellect. It means they both are opposite. <laughs> how can I say? that I have a lot of stress, forget, I have a lot of reaction, no way. Because dispassion intellect is there. How can you have uh, the reaction, anxiety, duality, and a conflict? Uh, I'm in love with myself, there is a sense of calmness is pervading. The tattva, the last intellect, the real self intellect, comes at a later stage. So now see that, uh, Mangala Charan, I did it, and now I followed this uh, satsang. How do I follow this satsang? So in the satsang, you see that, that is the, that is how people get confused because even in science, you know, you have main principle and then you have sub principles. You have subset of the principle. Uh, even, you know, for smartphone and the smartwatch cannot be manufactured without having a main principle and then you have subsets and the subsets again spread into different principles and that is how they make the chip. And then they check the chip, you know, this will function. This is the answer. If this answer is right, then yes, 
it will uh, it will open up the message section it will open the my phone contact it will open up the video it will open the audio that is what that is what we have to understand clearly the satsang is there so in the subset is the subset is fourfold practice vivek vairagya shatak sampatti and uh, mumuksha we Mumuk. have already done and then uh, i have to see the progress how the progress the four types of intellect okay i have four types of intellect now i can see i am in different there is a dispassion intellect there is a righteous intellect today from morning till evening i performed all my nitya karma so i don't have any blame complain reaction i don't have any thought remains in my mind pertaining to action that is the result so i'm relaxed i started with relaxation and calmness and i'm i'm uh, in the evening also i'm relaxed so it becomes easy for me to lie down and sleep pragmatic very pragmatic approach not philosophical that we need to uh, apply okay then what happens then master says when you have for these three types or even two types of the intellect the mind now breaks its faith of anxiety of reaction of false i and it develops a faith on the viveka on the vera because you are an engineer so you are a physics student so i thought better to talk purely in a rational way so now you see that go back to the four types of righteous intellect nitya karma i performed all my nitya karma today mind is clear first day second day third day one week now the mind does not invite any reaction and anxiety that mind now shifts it faith and belief instead of solving the problem through an anxiety now it is solving the problem through the faith that is the faith faith does not mean it's a blind belief you believe me you know many teachers say oh if you don't believe me then you will not get any benefit better i should not believe you i should believe in myself that is what my master used to say that don't go to those people they say that you know you believe me blindly i will give you the mantra do the practice and you will be awakened no i can never be awakened because the teacher of the eastern wisdom is not a preacher he has to explain the cause and effect he has to explain each and every minute points preacher means that preacher pope preacher is yeah, yeah, so preacher is just say you do this and it will happen who know how it will happen so i'm making you aware that what will happen so because i follow this satsang and then the fourfold practices uh, comes in between then we have four types of intellect now my intellect becomes more and more clear that results in goes into the mind now i have a faith i have a faith how i have a faith because i experienced it i have an experience that i investigated uh, my attachment and i broke that uh, attachment once i broke that attachment i am free from the delusion and by just by understanding and when i am free from the delusion i feel the calmness and then i want to be aware that from where this calmness comes it does not depend on anything outside it is from coming from within so that mind that mind mind says what is happening i was into anxiety for getting the peace from outside i was seeking a pleasure from outside but now something different has happened to me so from the intellect four types of intellect we move to the four types of four experiences either you can say 
four experiences of the intellect or four experiences of the mind. It almost is the same thing. What are those four experiences? So I have a tremendous faith now. So any situation outside is there and my mind moves. Because I, wherever I have a faith, my mind moves there. So I have broken the other faith, which causes the negative experiences. Now I have a faith here. So now you have a repeated mind repeats it again. That repeated faith becomes a sankalpa. What is this sankalpa? It becomes a natural focus and concentration. Concentration in psychology means that I have to constantly bring my mind back again and again on the object of concentration. That is not what Eastern wisdom says. Now your mind is already clear. You have a clarity. You have a faith. So what faith you have? The, on the real self. So you are not struggling with the other thoughts. There is an outlet me said, and I'm feeling relaxed. That kind of a focus comes, and that is known as the sankalpa. I have to explain by giving an example of uh, from Patanjali. So in the third chapter, Patanjali explains Sayyam. He uses the word Sayyam as a meditation process. And then he says that Sayyam has three stages. The first stage, he says Dharana. Dharana, uh, literal translation is concentration. So now I have to understand this part. Second part is known as dhyana, dhyana nirvishayam mana, and third part is known as samadhi. So he explains the three processes or three states. So here, now I have developed a sankalpa. Mind comes, mind previously it was picking up anxiety, reaction, duality, ignorance, false sight. Now it is picking up constantly. Calmness and peace. The Sadhana Panchakam is written by the Shankaracharya, so he has to follow another process. But then more or less we have the same. Now come to the Dharma. So Dharana, though the literal translation is concentration and people miss interpret concentration from the modern cycles. Now, if you, what is the, uh, why, how Patanjali explains this? Yeah. Desabandhasya chittasya dharana. So he defines this dharana not as a part of concentration from modern psychology. What he says, confining the territory of the mind on a particular object is dharana. You confine the territory of the mind. What it means? You return home, open the main door and close it. You have confined yourself into the home. There is no focus on a particular area of your home. You can go to your bedroom, you can go to your restroom, you can go to the kitchen, you can go to the patio. You can... <laughs> that is the dharana. It is not a concentration. So my, I confine the territory of the mind by faith in the real self. Peace. Oh, real self. Calmness, real self. Indifferent. You have to apply this in your life. Another example. 
the cows and the dogs are tied with a long leash. That is dharana. Now the dog has a territory. Dog is not going anywhere, but still it has a freedom. It, it Still it has a freedom. That limited freedom is there. What is that limited freedom? Limited freedom about the real self. Limited freedom, not about the false I. That will always help you succeed in any meditation. Once you become aware of this fact, but we have to continue the practice huh, of this satsang, and then we recognize, oh, I have only to remember that I am the real self. I am traveling in a train, yes. Driving a car, yes. Eating a food, yes. I am the real self. I am eating a food. But pasta gives me more pleasure. Let me eat a little more. No, hold on. Real self. Pleasure, uh, pleasure is coming from the real self. I, my belly is already full. Hold on. That's all. Finished. So you are confining the territory of the mind gently, not forcibly, not by pressure, not by uh, what people say, if we concentrate, so I'm suppressing. No, there is no suppression. Think. Contemplate and reflect. Then what happens? I have a faith, I have a sankalpa, uh, the both, that leads to dharana. Patanjali did not explain to what can lead to the dharana. That is the beauty of the Eastern wisdom. Some other teacher explains. And from there we get it. <laughs> from there we get the understanding. Otherwise, the very first chapter, first uh, verse, first sutra, Oh. Confining the territory of the mind. But did he not explain in the previous two chapters? Yes, he has explained it. Where he has explained in the very first chapter. You remember. What do you remember? There are five objective states of the mind and there are five subjective states of the mind. Uh, one is the mind that is constantly wandering mind. Another mind is the foolish mind. Third mind is the occasionally steady. And the fourth mind is one-pointedness, one-pointedness. Sankalpa, and the fifth is empty mind, that is indicating the samadhi. He has explained, because you did not pay attention. You thought, let me uh, read the Yoga Sutra like a novel, like a fiction. It will not work. That is why the satsang is required. Uh, you look at it. I'm just combining, giving you a different perspective. Oh, Shraddha, Faith, Sankalpa. Now I understand the Sankalpa. I have to simply remember. And uh, my mind is getting attached to something. I'm the real self. Attachment is not required. So it's a dynamic faith. It is not that I believe you, honey. It's a constant awareness. And that results into sankalpa, and then we come to the dharana, desivandhasya chitasya dharana. And then, then uh, this master explains sayyam. So he, he separated the dharana. Sayyam again means the, all the three stages of meditation. So why he said, so he just separated dharana that are, are you able to maintain your awareness on the real self? No, I'm not able to forget about real self. Did your mind continuously, consciously, mentally, non-verbally saying Om Namah Shivai? 
that is why we are doing Om Namah Shivaya meditation. <laughs> so we are looking into that Sankalpa. Om Namah Shivaya. No, no, but I have uh, I have a business meeting. Okay, I when you have a business meeting, you have to use your intellect and the mind use it. But are you not aware that you are a man during the meeting? Yes, I'm aware. So maintain your awareness. Why you say Om Namah Shivaya? Why you say Om Namah Shivaya? Oh, it means that I have to go very. Uh, I have to maintain my awareness at a deeper level. Yes, that is why we are a seeker. Non-seeker cannot do this. So how to achieve this? We have been doing it. We are doing a Om Namah Shivaya meditation uh, every week. You are doing it regularly. And the time comes now. Now I'm not saying it mentally. But beyond the mind, I can recognize that there is a Om Namah Shivaya. I'm speaking to you loudly so that you can hear through your ears what I have to do to make my mind listen to me. Do I need to speak loudly? I have to do it mentally. So when I say Om Namah Shivaya mentally, so my my mind is listening to me, but then there is another stage of it. I reach there. So I have once I reach there, I have achieved the dharana part. Means that the first stage of the meditation is crossed. There is a tremendous change in the behavior and attitude when you reach to that state because we have a righteous intellect, we have a dispassion intellect, we have a love intellect. And all the three gives you the faith in the sankalpa and the dharana. And uh, somewhere during that talk, I also referred the external discipline. Or you can say the internal or the external discipline. Uh, the four discipline. I gave an example of a crow, swan, dog, and the major dite. Where is that? Uh, the focus or attention like a swan. I did something, I forget that. Uh, let me remember the verse. Uh, sleep like a dog. Sleep means that I'm aware and alert. So when I go to this sleep, I clear my mind and then I sleep so that I go into a deeper state of relaxation. But if there is anything that I need to do, I return. That habit, the focus or focus like a swan, grows, uh, gives an ability of discernment and measure diet. Why measure diet? You already know. Rati, Tripti, and Pushti. That is. That is. So understand from main principle and then the sub part and like the branches of a tree, it moves, it moves from one step to the other step. Power of the faith, power of the decision. Another way, the power of decision. It is not, Sankalpa is not concentration, power of a decision. I'm going to my office, so I'm going to my office. My sense organ, my motor organs, my mind, all are moving into that direction. Om Namah Shivaya, mentally, Om Namah Shivaya, Om Namah Shivaya. And that results into the Dharana Sankalpa. So 
So what happens? What happens is uh, is we can like a crow. I crow means it adapts itself. What it is the meaning of adapting? Adapting means that you are with your honey and a couple of times you remember all my sure mentally. Nobody knows. So you maintain that awareness and attention. Because now you're you have two two pronged attention. One is outside listening to the honey, other is on Om Namah Shiva. Natural discernment will come, Viveka will come. You have already divided. And that will prevent you to get into anxiety or reaction. Unnecessary. Very pragmatic, very practical. So that crow is like a resource for resources like a crow and the swan like a focus and the determination. This guy who became a millionaire I was watching yesterday, his mother was telling the entire audience that in spite of eight surgeries, he is reduced to a skeleton he faces a lot of pain in the problem. He continued his study. He secured more than 98% marks in all his examination. It is because of his obstinacy. It is be what is that? What do you mean by obstinacy? That my mind is not leaving a particular thought. So I was thinking that it is not obstinacy, it is the sankalpa. It is a good sankalpa. So not only he is the burden of his parents because eight surgeries, it takes a lot of money. Now he is a millionaire. So he was saying in an interview that almost 50% of the money will be spent in my surgery. The rest 50% I will give it to my parents. Now you see that I covered that, but I'm covering in a different way. So you, your, you, your mind and intellect followed everything and it is following weeks after weeks after weeks. What happens? Your intellect, your wisdom, your knowledge prevents the mind to be influenced and dictated by any event, situation, relations outside. So subset, subset again. Uh, the wall is so ugly. Is the wall saying to me that I am ugly or it is my mind? It is my mind. So wall is even inert, non-living and still I am influenced by the wall. What a crazy mind is. So Situation, event, people, relationship, first option. My mind is constantly influenced and dictated by anything and everything. Oh, it's very cold. We are the, we are the warm clothes. Then what's the problem? No, no, but my mind, you know, gets upset when there is too much of cold. That is why you are crazy. I don't allow the mind to be influenced and dictated. Let me adjust and find out. Who finds out? The intellect. So as far as, as far as the outer situation is concerned, that is then, but I, what happens 
now my mind is not influenced by duality and a conflict, attachment and detachment, reaction, anger, and hesitation. This is what happens. How can you explain it? Emotional freedom. Previously, emotional dependence was there, but now what the heck it is 10, 20, and I have to reach there, so much of traffic. No reaction. I looked at the watch, it has nothing to do with my mind. Mind, remain calm. It's a traffic jam. You cannot do anything. Be clear. No, but that guy is waiting. Okay, let him wait. That's not good. Yes, that's not good. You have left, you should have left, uh, left for the office maybe one hour before. You should have reached 15 minutes before. Or next time I will do it in your car. So the emotional, emotional, emotional freedom, emotional freedom comes. In any situation, in every situation in your life. I'm linking, so you have to think. Uh, Sometimes we have understood 5E, engagement, uh, education, empowerment, evolution. So now, now you move to the fourth stage. You start living with a new level of awareness all the time. Empowerment is done. Education is done. Uh, you find that, you know, as if, as if, you know, I'm living in an empty space all the time. A great achievement in the journey. So why empty space? Because now it is subjective awareness. It is the consciousness is purely subjective. And that consciousness without any past impression gives an experience of emptiness in the mind. It remains very clear to you. And when it remains very clear, we can definitely and sure we can move to the next part. See how engagement done, education done, empowerment. So mind is empowered with those principles. Now the mind continues to stay in that state throughout the day. You did not find any event, any situation from morning until you retire to the bed. It means throughout the day you are full of calmness and peace. You did not find any situation. Why? Because of this. So what is this? This is an evolution of your consciousness, evolution of your mind. Previously, 10 events, 10 times I was reacting. Now, five times, now two times, now one time. That is the progress. That is the progress. Oh, you didn't get to sleep. You wake up in the morning. Thank you. I'm okay. Can I maintain awareness? Yes, I can maintain awareness. There is some heaviness. Yes, there is not. Let me do the practice. Let me raise my energy level. Done. So I move into that. So your mind automatically starts doing, following these practices. Last point, you see that I should have spoken earlier. But this is what it is. You have already 
heard a lot about four connections. So this is how we reach to the four connections. <laughs> So what is for connection? Adhikari, I'm a qualified seeker. Oh, I have progressed. What is the second? What is the subject matter? Real self. Oh, I had a glimpse. What is the goal? End of suffering. Oh, I am not at all distracted, reacted today, tomorrow, day after, yesterday also. You see that then only we understand what, how the masters have discovered these principles in their relationship. A constant awareness of my goal related to end of suffering. I'm already come. This is what happens 